back of WNST, Taos and Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are positively at Cooper's. I've got the menu, finally. We're Cooper's North. I haven't gone to Cooper's South, although I did have lunch there a couple months ago back in the summertime. Uh, it's all brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. We're letting ourselves play out here, giving away some Raven scratch-offs because tis the season, and it is a Purple Friday. Uh, it is also Restaurant Week, and the Maryland Restaurant Association recommending that you get out, take advantage of guys like Terry showing off at places like Cooper's North up here mm -hmm. in Mays Chapel tomorrow. Also, our friends at Goodwill. I've been cleaning out closets. They didn't have a truck to send this weekend, so my wife and I were just going to load up the car, old school, take it over to Joppa Road. Make sure you're doing the same thing, giving the Goodwill. They're also recycling plastic and had Lisa Rosiniak on. And last but not least, our friends at Window Nation, 86690 Nation. They did my windows. They can do yours. They're awesome. The bucket hat, I wore it last segment. I look goofy. I couldn't <laughs> hear real well. Kate Pike laughed at me, so I'm not wearing it this segment, but I wish I were wearing it. Caroline Evans is here from South Meese. She has um, been drinking Moscow Mules at the bar here at Cooper's Tavern. Uh, Terry Beck is here. He was a world-famous wide receiver at Milford Mill. Because I, so I check in here at 1 o'clock. I take a selfie of me with the rug eating uh, a gumbo. And I put it out. I said, I'm at Cooper's North. And uh, Big Bob says... Say hi to Terry Beck, the manager, best receiver for Milford Mills yeah. in the 70s. And I'm thinking the internet works quick, man. Right. I mean, you know, they don't, they don't play games with the internet around here. The internet knows, Terry, do they not? Yes, they do. You are the manager here, yes? Yes. How many years? Uh, since thir going on 13. I originally uh, started with Patrick in Fells Point for the first four years. And then when we opened up uh, the north location, the Mays Chapel, I came uh, and worked. With, you know, I've been here in the county ever since. Well, I've known Patrick since Homicide was shooting down in the city. And they needed, it may have been a leukemia fundraiser or kidney or cancer. I don't remember exactly what the fundraiser was. But they had John Seda and Richard Belzer and all the guys from the cast, uh, Yafik Kato, they were all tending bar. You're and right. Cooper's and Cooper was alive. The dog, the pictures all over the place. So I actually drank beer with Cooper. Wow. So that's how old I am. So we're going back now. It's a good 24, 20. Is it 25 years? How long 25 in Fells Point. We they just had their anniversary on Wednesday. Here. Ten here. Yes. How long have you been drinking at the bar, Carolyn? Oh gosh, for ten long years. It's been wonderful though. It's <laughs> a, you know it's our neighborhood cheers, so well, we so, love it. Well, Patrick hit me, and I had no idea that he was booking the show. So he's booked guests. I had Ron Klausner here. He had to go to the Gilman game. I'm sorry, Ron. I thought Ron was just like hanging out. I knew Ron from downtown. So it's good to have you here. But this is a cheers bar. When I think of Mace Chapel and I came up, I screwed up. I pulled in where the pool was. I made the turn a little too early coming here because I got down the valley. I'm like, shit, I went the wrong way. I got to go back in there. This area is just such a sort of undiscovered Beautiful. I call it an enclave. You live here. Yes. It's, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I am a realtor, but I, I love to stay in 21093 as much as I can because when you walk in here, you have great food, great atmosphere, and then the clientele that comes to sit at the bar, whether they're working, I mean, you always see a laptop out on the bar. It's some golfers coming in after golf during the, the season or just, you know, kids coming I in after I saw you down there working. You're I like was, a real real. I was. I was working. They, is this an office? Is this Cooper's office north? Is that what this is? Pretty much, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unlimited to supply gumbo right we see our regular customers four and five days a week it's awesome people come in five days a week really absolutely that is cheers yeah it really is well that's why patrick said to you he said i got to get some of the, my, my regulars on the show and promote real estate promote crab cakes and all that so i did the crab cake tour a year and a half ago the reason i i really did it and i thought it would be beer sponsored and i really thought like an old bay or somebody would want to sponsor going out but You've been in this industry a long time. Right. You had the bar taken away from you for months and months at a time. Everybody had it curbside. It's hard to curbside French fries, right? Two and a half years ago, this hits. A year into the plague, we're open, we're shut, we're masking the county, we're masking the city, all this is going on. I thought when this thing's over with, being able to come out here and like hang out, put headsets on, talk to people about local things, things that are really going on on a beautiful fall day, there's always activity in restaurants and bars, and I think we missed it the most when it was taken away from us. All of us, not Absolutely. just people working, and God bless all of you who tried to PPP and keep it right. together and tip curbside and do all that. But for people who do love their neighborhood place, we had it taken away, and, and I don't think any of us ever saw that coming. Um, and that's what the Crab Cake Tour is about. It's about bringing the stories together to bring people to bars to keep these places going right when the uh pandemic was going on we were able to fortunately pull up our chow hound burger truck out front when you know the restaurants so inside, you serve right yeah out we of serve right out of the truck out front for a good year so you didn't even have to curbside did you set up a, did you set up picnic we tables? said no <laughs> i mean we, we had a few but 
they fr- they frowned upon uh, six the six feet distance. You know what's crazy about me is I lived downtown for the last twenty years. We just moved out to the county this year. Miss Realtor Lady, uh, Carol. So I got, I got her car, Caroline Evans. <laughs> yeah. So. so Part of the, the plague that freaked everybody out of staying in is everybody wanted fresh air. My wife took up hiking. Me, tenderfoot, out like on trails, Centennial Park. I'm up in gunpowder, like stepping over rocks and different stuff. So you're laughing at me about like, outdoor activities. I, I stretch during the plague. I did things that I hadn't done. What were you guys doing during the plague? You know, it's, uh, well. Real estate went crazy. I was, that was one of my biggest years I've ever had. So, you know, we had to jump right in because, you know, we are, we are an, an 2%, essential, we're 2%, essential right. workers. Uh, 2%. Listen, we did a good, we had a great year. But, um, you know, I, I, I couldn't thank Coopers enough, like, you know, to, toot their horn again because you know being a community member and you're locked in your house with your family let me tell you um it was a little stressful so the gumbo to go i got oh look that food truck i mean it's over here killing the gumbo it is so delicious (laughs) (laughs) she's like got the bread going "Ah." i mean they were just invaluable (laughs) to our community and i did i mean i did like our sunday uh orange crushes to go those were delicious too um, were you putting them in cans they had them in like big, big plastic uh, 24 bags. ounce cups. Yeah, it was incredible. So it got. Crushes you know, hit you different at home than they do at the bar. <laughs> and then we were doing a lot of um, char- charity burgers. So area hospitals during the pandemic. Patrick was uh, fantastic. A lot the, of folks the, were doing yes, that. It, feed, it was feed, great. Feed the, feed, feed the hospitals. Feed the firemen. Feed the, the. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, look, we're Cooper's North. I'm going to have a crab cake before it's all over with here. I've actually I've had the the Cooper's crab cake one other time, and it, it came honestly it involved your your chow ham. Um, Hugh Sisson, and I know you poor heavy seas here. Hugh Sisson um, was doing this Ukrainian benefit, right? Uh, the war happened. There was a Ukraine brewery that was giving their markings Good and luck. and their uh, recipes to any brewery in the world that wanted to support Ukraine. So Hugh painted the whole place Ukraine on a Friday, brewed up a special red ale an American red ale that this Ukrainian brewery did. And I said, well, I got to come out and do the crab cake tour with you. I said, the only problem is you're a beer joint. You don't have any crab cakes. He's like, oh, no, no, no. I'm going to call Patrick. I'm like, you know Patrick? I know Patrick. So next thing you know, we had um, the gal I just met. Sam. Sam, 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 I'm sorry. Sam came out. She hung out. She had a crab cake with us. We had it off. And he had hundreds of people. Added heavy seas that day, so I've had half your crab cake, you know. But you'll, the, the you'll gumbo, be pleasantly surprised. You'll be really enjoy it. I was telling Kate, I came in here because you know the legend of St. Patrick's Day here, right? St. Patrick's Day, you guys do the best corned beef and cabbage. I know this. I've tasted it all. I've sampled right. it all. So I know how special you guys treat St. Patrick's Day. My wife and I came in here like maybe March 14th or 15th, get an early start uh, before the crazies get involved. And I sat at the bar, and Andy was tending bar on a Saturday here. And, and I've known Andy for years, Shuckers, the whole right. deal. And, uh, and I came in, I ordered a corned beef. He's like, let me bring you some gumbo. And I said, gumbo can be a little spicy. Right. I'm a little afraid of it. He's like, Guy Fietti loved this gumbo. Let me tell you, if you're, you're here one day, I like you. I care about you. You're not leaving without trying the gumbo. So he brings me out a little Dixie cup of the gumbo. And I'm, all right, I'll have a cup of that. You know? So I had it. I've been waiting six months to come back here to get the gumbo. Right. So that bowl you brought me out. In my belly. Delicious. Right. It is. You never go wrong what with the gumbo. Oh, well, um, <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, they Besides have the Moscow mules that I've seen. I there. mean, they are very good Moscow mules, <laughs> let me say. Uh, but no, usually it's I come a Friday in here. Friday afternoon. We're loose. You here. know what? It depends on my day. I used to be the fish taco crazy lady. Okay. And then I switched over to a veggie burger. You know, during COVID, I uh, probably enhanced in a little bit too much wine and. Eight minute, uh, did some more Doritos and uh, yeah. yeah, home cooking Doritos. So when I come here now, I love their veggie burger, which is excellent actually. Um, and then you know the menu. Thankfully, these guys are so smart; they change it up every quarter, so we're not eating the same thing every single time. So I'm excited for the fall menu to come out because I think will we get our meatloaf back? Yes, and absolutely. All the, all no meatloaf the, today though. No meatloaf think today. So, no. I it's told my wife. French I said, dip. If they got right. meatloaf, I'm bringing it home. Cause, oh, it's Because so meatloaf good. feels like today i woke up this morning it's 47 degrees i'm freezing i'm putting on long johns i i I have a full like two layer i'm a my people are from the equator i'm (laughs) venezuelan i can't once it gets below 68 nestor gets chilly man i'm like mr freeze i know i'm I'm going to the orioles game tonight and i have got to go home and get my parka out my my knit hat (laughs) it's gonna be chilly tonight 
Go O's. Go O's. Go O's. Go O's. Terry, for, for you with Coopers and all these years here and all this stuff, um, conceptually neighborhood bar and all that, and I think Patrick's going to come in and talk about it a little bit, right. but having people like Caroline in the neighborhood, uh, like Fells Point, there was some of that for sure, but Fells Point's a different kind of vibe. I mean, totally. A cilantro, the whole deal, everything right. you guys have done down there. Right. It's a, it, it mainly reaches out to the family-oriented style, you know, family-style restaurant. Uh, we don't get the real young kids that you see at High Tops and some of the other restaurants in the area. But like I said, our clientele, it's a repeat business. Uh, it's a family, uh, well-liked uh, restaurant. I mean, it's just uh, everyone knows one another. So I got it's a memory a, a home, here. A home away from home. It just came to me. Kim Knight uh, was my traffic gal for years and years. Kim, I want to rock and roll all night. Her and her husband, John. When my wife had cancer the first time, she couldn't go out and really – I mean, she's – Bald, no offense, look right. nice. Look, right. Uh, her, her head looked as beautiful as yours um, and her eyes as well. But when she got sick, she couldn't go out. And the first time we ever went out after she really was at the bottom of the – she still had her, her ball and her port right. in her chest. We came out here. She was little and frail. And we sat right over there with Kim Knight and had lunch. It was the first time I had wow. been in here because you great. guys probably opened about 12 or 13, right? This was 14. So this is probably right. the summer 2012, of 2012, September of 2012. This was, yeah, this is probably like June of 14 that we came in here for the first time. But it's literally the first time my wife went out uh, during that. My wife's doing great. She's eight years, uh, you know, uh, cancer-free and doing awesome. Two bone marrow transplants. But we have a little, we have a special memory here, you know. Right. Well, first time getting out of the house. Right. That's one thing we do share in common. Unfortunately, I'm a two-time survivor of leukemia. And I want to thank you again for reaching out and helping me with my daughter's uh, charity event. The second time I went through chemo, which was awesome. Well, look at you. Thank you. You doing all right? Yes, feeling great. Man, it's it's unbelievable the survivor network of people, right? Like, and I don't know that it's me or some sort of weird serendipity, but if I say leukemia, cancer, bone marrow, somebody comes over and says, "Oh, who had leukemia? I had leukemia. My daughter had leukemia." Right? It, it, it's like we were the only ones we knew when we knew it. In 2014, the only person in the world we knew who had leukemia was Chuck Pagano. Like, literally, the right. doctors came in, were in the room, shell-shocked. We're like, oh, my God, you know, and what are we going to do? We, we text Chuck because Chuck was the only person we knew. Like, we're Googling, we're going crazy, like, right. trying to figure things out. Right. It was that and Brian's song, right? Right. Right, the movie? You're old. And you you yes. remember that, right? Tear jerker, I remember. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. But look at you, man. You're a miracle. Thank you. Terry Beck, he's, uh, he's managing things out here, including the uh, bar tab. What is that, that special uh, heavy seas that you pour? It it's the Cooper's Lager. That's named for you, but only available yes. here. Well, it went from Cooper's Yellowtail for years, and they recently uh, did away with the uh, Yellowtail Ale, and now it's a lager. I'm thirsty. How about you, Caroline? Oh, I mean, I've got a Is good... Is it Caroline or Caroline? Caroline. Well, Caroline. Sweet Caroline. You Southern? <laughs> <laughs> I lived in Charlotte, North Carolina for a little bit, so it comes out when so people ask me. you're a Caroline in Carolina. A Caroline in, in my Carolina. Mind. In my mind. I'm exactly. Going. There you go. <laughs> Tell everybody how to find you and what you do. What kind of places you sell and buy? Oh, we do everything at Sotheby's. You're getting, you know, first class world global experience with, you know, a great little community that we That's have a hell here. Of a you gotta go. I'm you. Yeah, I gotta go. He's, he's, he's gotta go grab the phone. He's working here. All right. We'll Love wrap him. things up with yep. you. We'll have fun. Yeah, yeah. You got so kids, you gotta wait. Give me a story. Three kiddos, a twenty two year old just graduated off the books now. I've got a, a daughter that's in eighth grade and a son that's in sixth grade. You better so. get them from school. Oh, listen, I, I got that taken care of. Good sleepover Friday night. You gotta love it. Kids are back at school, man. I, Bill Cole is my client from Cole Roofing. We talked this week just about if you are a parent. My son turned 38 yesterday, so I'm way done. Um, and they ain't having their – don't even think about it. Grandpapa. Ah, don't say that to me <laughs> on the air. I feel like Archie Bunker, you say that to me. But people go back to school, and, like, everything about lives change for parents. And there, is, there, there really are two seasons. There's in school – and in sports, right, if they're into sports, and then there's, hey, we got a couple of weeks in the summer we can run down to Dewey or, like, hang out at Ocean City or whatever, right? Yeah, it's that's exactly, you're explaining our family. We've been so fortunate to have a house in Ocean City, and um, we sold it over COVID, unfortunately, just because we were anticipating us going from a nice summer to a good summer to next year we'll be there for maybe 10 days. Okay. So it's funny, as you're saying, like we are now in, inundated in sports for the next seven years. So our summers were in, you know. Where do they play? Oh, lacrosse. All right. I mean, could you imagine, right, in Baltimore? Um, so we are I in lacrosse. I saw Klausner with his lacrosse. Oh, yeah, shit. Cooper's. We love Cooper's lacrosse. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's different for us this summer. But, again, 
like I can't say enough. All right, so I might be home a little bit more this summer, but again, I have my family here. I've got our family all around here. We've got great pools around here, and you know, well, it'll just be different. The different. plague effed me up. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, things have changed. You know, I mean, after the plague, nothing's sort of like it used to be. Nothing even feels. Ravens games don't feel the same way to me. Orioles game, no, nothing. Concerts still feel kind of normal. Like, yeah. I was with the Merriweather the other night. Yep. I've been, uh, concerts are the one thing that have been a draw for me. I saw Pearl Jam a couple times uh, a couple weeks ago where there's some semblance of, oh, I recognize this. But, I mean, even restaurants, outdoor seating, berms, which is beautiful. I mean, I was up in Canada, Montreal, seeing outdoor seating there, but seeing it all over the country everywhere I go now, it's just sort of a, a, a major change. Change real estate as well, too. Well, right? oh, big time. I mean, but I, I kind of, you know, if you had to say anything about the pandemic, it brought everyone's community together and we had to come up with different ways to survive right these restaurants had to come up with all of these creative ways all of the every business had to come up with a creative way to survive and I really have to compliment um, you know Baltimore and Baltimore City and Mar they really fought really hard to keep as many businesses as they could alive um, and that was really important and, and us as business professionals we tried to keep them alive well, as well part of our positives, yeah. all that. People exactly. like, what, what are you doing I'm like well the world shut down and there was no sports and I started talking to regular people and local people much like I did taking phone calls right. for the first 20 years of my career, but just trying to say, supporting each other. And what's, I mean, dogs and cats and dog fest, and we've got Cal Ripken Foundation, and we're doing a basketball event, and we're serving crab cakes and gumbo and ice cold beer out here, and the games are on. And, you know, just there, there's a lot of life, I think, after this, but it's different. And I think it's different for your kids. Oh, I mean, <laughs> it, it's going to, you know, how they're going to perceive the world when this is over with. Yeah. And I had an intern this summer. She looked better in the Window Nation hat than I did. It fit the bucket head. Uh, she's my South Carolina uh, junior now at college. She came back. She didn't have a regular graduation. She was COVID baby. She Ugh. was a senior year of COVID, you know, yeah. prom, yep. drive-by graduations. I'm thinking... Man, if that happened to summer 85, I'd be all messed up. <laughs> okay. I, I'm telling you. Me too. Class of 94 here. So Caroline Evans. She is a, it says sales associate. She just does real estate. You can find her at Sotheby's. You can probably find her having a Moscow mule. We're at uh, Cooper's North. It is the cheers of May's Chapel and Timonium. Uh, and I've got my own little personal stories of gumbo uh, sustained here, as well as uh, uh, corned beef and cabbage taken home on St. Patrick's Day. Wind Nation sponsors us, as do our friends at uh, Goodwill and, of course, you're of age. Your kids are 22, <laughs> so I know you're old enough to have a lottery ticket. Uh, it's all brought to you by the Maryland Lottery. We're letting ourselves play with some Maryland Lottery and Ravens scratch-offs. I still got a handful of the Show Me 10,000s. Do um, you have any real estate advice you would give to people? Because um, I have a lot of people in the game. I had a hard time. I had a 23rd floor condo at Harbor Court that we bought for $439,000 in 2003. I gave it away for $390,000 after putting $250,000 into it because the city was the city. The market is the market. Condos are condos. We needed to exit. We love living downtown. We love downtown Baltimore. We loved all of that. But as an investment piece where we are in our lives, 2% sounded nice two years ago, but there was no exit for us yeah. on a personal level. Mm -hmm. And we're cool now and all that, but... Um, I don't know that you and I will live long enough or get gray enough to see 2% come back. Right? Uh, you know, like it really was a once-in-a-lifetime kind well, of a grab. It was. And I don't know how good that is for the economy anyhow. I believe truly, though, that you know when I bought my first condo out of college, I believe my interest rate was 11%. And so I was eight seven five. Okay, so you were a little better. So I was eleven percent. Now I lived in South Florida. That's so. sweet, daddy. Great man. What is that? That is. Was in, well, you know, I was just out of college, so you know, I don't. I'm saying, you know, right now. But you got um, the five hundred dollar HUD credit, first time buyer. First time buyer, exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm. So, Good I, news is we'll give you five hundred dollars. The bad news it's eighteen percent. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I just think you know, <laughs> don't be scared to buy a house right now. I think we're, everyone's still getting a great deal. I think we're seeing our our sales prices come down a little bit. Um, not yet. I mean, we still don't have a lot of inventory because people are nervous. Um, but, you know, we're get hitting serious buyers come in the winter because they want that house. So um, well, the, the don't be scared that, to list in the winter either. This is the thing I haven't talked to anybody about. And, and Leonard Raskin, oh, he's, I said Leonard Raskin's going to be here. He, he, Leonard Raskin's here. I'll talk to him about this a little bit too. And you, you could get your calculator out on this. But if you were to have bought, let's just say, a $400,000 house, during the, the plague at 2%, and whatever your finances or however it worked out. But let's say you paid, that, that house was 330000 before the, I mean, right. houses went crazy. Insanity. That to me, it sort of offset the notion that 
if the six hundred thousand dollar house is now seven fifty and I'm getting a two percent, what difference does it make? It doesn't. You're right. You're <laughs> you know, exactly well, right. In terms of I'm feeling better about it, but it felt like the inflation part of this. I've got fourteen bids and we're sixty grand over ask and like all of this that you dealt with. It was. It didn't make any sense to me. Like, why are all these people bidding to bid, to bid, to bid, to bid, to get high, to get 2% and pay 50 grand too much for the house? I, I, I don't know the math on that, but I'm thinking and it probably was tricky. Let me tell you, it was extremely, it was stressful for all of us. I mean, I'm not, you know, it was definitely some great years, but I, I definitely have some gray hairs popping through because, you know, we love our people. We love our buyers. We love our sellers. And it, it, it was a really stressful time to go through 17 offers and, you know, first time home buyers. Could cash? you imagine how many first time yeah. home buyers had to have be disappointed so many times in one transaction? I mean, it was, it you was must remarkable. Have some people lose five, six deals, just losing oh, their mind. Right? Uh, and yeah, so we're, yeah, I mean, but again, you have to set and, expectations. And mom picture, pictures herself in that kitchen. And every, that ki- fans, every kitchen. And yep. you're in love with it. And then... Yep. It evaporates. And then it's gone in a second. So you really had to set expectations for clients to say, this is a black and white deal right now. We cannot have any emotion in it. Okay. And that's, we really had to sit there and, and walk them through it. And, um, you know, right now it's, it's, it's fall. It's a little slower, so not as stressful. But um, you don't you look know. stressed at all. You were having a Moscow. Oh God, I'm going to get you off the air. You go Tell back you. down the end of the Cannot bar. Wait. Do your Friday afternoon real estate. Do all that fall pumpkin Spice planning. Spicy. Yeah, I need some apple pie around <laughs> here. We're at Cooper's North. It's all brought to you by the Maryland Lottery Goodwill Window Nation. And, of course, get out. We're in places like Cooper's North, so you get out and enjoy restaurant week. Uh, and Caroline will sell you a, uh, a place, not in Carolina, but in Mays Chapel or Mays Chapel. somewhere near here. Absolutely. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you very so much. much. Patrick Russell, book and guest by. Terry Beck came by, said hello. I think Patrick's going to get here in the 4 o'clock hour. Leonard Raskin's going to be here a little later on and explain the most clever – crab mallet in the history of crab mallets it opens beer it cracks crabs it it, it opens claws it does things uh we'll learn more about that uh greg landry's gonna be here from towson transfers as well it is the maryland crab cake tour featuring gumbo and beer and Soon Moscow meals. for me i'm gonna have some more than cooper's longer i'm nestor we are wnst am 1570 towson baltimore stay with us we're cooper's north we're in may's chapel and i'm praying for beer